Hi, I'm Sarah Middleton. Tune into our episode of The Mashup, where we talk about P3T, dual military, family care plans, and enrolling in school. Hi guys, welcome to The Mashup. I'm your host, Sergeant Thomas, and today we have... Sergeant Middleton. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, what's the MOS? I am a 25 Bravo. Mm -hmm. um, that is Information Technology Specialist. So, I'm your local Essex. Really? Yeah. That's it. Help desk. Period. How long you been in? So, October makes... Nine years? Nine. Yes, makes nine years. That is a long Oh, I know. Are you planning to make this a career? Uh, I'm on the fence. Um, I want to, but then again, I don't want to. Why not? Um, Only because the first nine years wasn't smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had a set of twins. Well, they're a year old now. So now I'm like, I want to be with them more and have more time with them. And then... You know, I want to be a dependent for a little bit. Here, dependent. <laughs> you had twins. Yes. While while serving. Yes, while serving. So, so yeah. how was that being pregnant with twins while coming to work every day? <laughs> um, you want to know the truth, or you want to know the I, truth? I want, truth. We need the truth. Okay, so initially when I first got here, I wasn't pregnant, and then when I by the time I signed into the unit, I found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I can't, well, I tried to keep it a secret for as long as I can because I'm like, I don't want nobody looking at me different, mm -hmm. coming into the unit pregnant. And I couldn't have it no more because my uniform was like snug and uh, like they was like I started showing real early. So um, I had to break the news to my soldiers, which wasn't bad news, but being the only female in a male dominated shop is like, ew, you know, they already, oh. you know, males already think that you can't do specific things because you're, you're, you're me and female. So that's what I'm like. I didn't really want to tell them, but I had to tell them. So, I mean, it wasn't bad, but like once I started reaching that second and third trimester, mm -hmm. I was tired. Really? So when I say tired, like tired, tired. But I mean, I was coming to work. Mm -hmm. And then once we completed everything, we was leaving. So we was getting up out of there like, 1500 So you let your soldiers leave when you left here? Yes. I made yeah. sure we cleared all tasks. And then if I'm leaving, mm -hmm. they leaving. And that's it. I don't like Did you have around. to do the same PT with them all day? No. So initially, you go to P3T, which is pregnancy, postpartum, physical training. Okay. Um. So I did that for a little while. And then eventually, my stomach was touching the steering wheel. So I was like, I can't do it. So... <laughs> So I, the first time at the time, she's like, it's okay. You know, just make sure you do a check-in every morning and you'll be good to go. So that was that. But um, P3T, you you kind of do workouts that's centered around your trimester if the program is ran right. Mm -hmm. But eh. So who runs the program? Like, is it, is it other soldiers? It, essentially, yes. So you have... You have to go through the P3G course. It's mandatory? Um, yeah. In order for you to um, be over the program. Mm -hmm. So, it, but you don't have to go through the course if you're going to be an exercise leader. Okay. So, exercise leader is somebody that just um, do the warm-up stretches, prep drills, recovery, thing, things like that. But if you're going to be over the program, you have to go through the course, have to um, complete the course, and then you get an ASI with that course. And What's ASI. So um, it's that little code that's on the back. So like I'm a 25 Bravo, so I'm 25 Bravo 30, and the ASI I believe is an A6. Mm -hmm. So it's just a code letting like HRC know like this person has this, or like if you go aerosol, you get a special code or ASI that goes on the back of your MOS and things of that nature. Okay. So they know how to slot you for um, when you PCS or wherever you may go. Mm -hmm. so. But yeah, so P3T. So you said it's pregnancy and postpartum. Mm -hmm. So after you had your twins, were you still in the program? Yeah. So you just move on the postpartum side of the program. Is that any different than the pregnancy? Like yeah, workouts? So, yeah. So postpartum, um, you the workout's supposed to be centered around you getting back into shape so you can be able to pass your ACFT. Um now is it really helping? I would say 
it's like 50 50. So if you go, if you do that PT for the morning, I say you have to do um, your own PT afterwards as well. Okay. Because you're not going to get 100% of everything you need. Are you able to come up like with your own workouts while you're there? Like, say if you were already super physically fit and mm-hmm. understood the gym before, mm-hmm. can I say like, okay, I want to work on this instead of doing what they tell you to do? Uh, so it depends on who, how you're, who's over the program. Mm-hmm. It depends on how they maneuver. So like now, me, I took over the program for for Stuart. Mm-hmm. So like I have some females they they're working on running marathons, and some females want to max out or whatever the case is and if they're really serious they were like i got a whole plan this is my plan i'll show you um I, can i just do check-ins and then you know some those people i let them do because if you already have something set in stone i don't want what i have to not motivate you mm-hmm. or not prepare you for what you really want to do so yeah i have my onesies and twosies <laughs> <laughs> that's good so do um so since the since the program is mandatory, how long do you have to stay in the program? Okay, so you initially you start the program when you get your confirmation of pregnancy, mm-hmm. which is I think here is twelve weeks if I'm not mistaken. So once you get that confirmation, you go all the way up until you have baby, or you if you take leave, then up until you take leave. Mm-hmm. So um, once you complete your maternity leave, then you, once you come back, you start postpart the postpartum side of the P3T program. Okay. So um, and that lasts up to 180 days after you have baby. Um, you can now they have where you can extend up until your 365 um, day marker, and then once you hit that 365, then you go back to your unit, you take your PT test, do your height and weight. So. Do you guys take PT tests while you're there just to see where you're at? Mm-hmm. So we we just started incorporating diagnostic a- ACFTs um, because a lot of females like I want to take one, I want to take one, I want to take one, and then only half of them show up to take it. But we do we do incorporate it. Um, we did one a week ago. Um, we had like twenty females show up. They did they did better than they thought they would do. That's so cool. I should say that. Um, and they want to do they want to start doing it twice a month instead of once a month. So I'm like, if that's what y'all want, I give it to you. So, are you able to get out the program earlier? Like, if you think that you're ready before your time? Yes, you can. So you can leave the program you just have to get it um signed off by your provider mm-hmm. um also if you do decide to leave the program and go back to unit pt you are still allotted that 365 um for your acft and your um uh height and weight but if you choose to waive your height and weight and acft before that 365 then you can do that too Okay, so that's good. So now that you're running the program, mm-hmm. is there anything that you think should change about the program? Um, so initially the program was non existent. Um, so they they had a group of um I think it was like maybe three NCOs running it. Mm-hmm. And wait, um, so you guys run it for the entire base? Like yeah, it's one program for yeah. the entire base. Mm-hmm. It's an installation ran program. So what they had going on, it work but it didn't work because mm-hmm. they didn't have they didn't have um an attendance tracker to track who's who's coming who's not coming or who's even still enrolled in the program and then they didn't have like um now i have a monthly calendar so i have a monthly calendar for the females so they can see what our day-to-day schedule look like or what we look like and i even asked for their input to see what they would like to see mm-hmm. so a lot of a lot of them wanted to incorporate rucking i'm like okay we can do it so um i'm not opposed to any suggestions or whatever the case might be because i um i was in the program and then i helped with the program and my last duty station. So I kind of know like the ins and outs of the program. So it kind of, I guess, prepared me to run the program, right. even though I didn't even see myself running the program. It just kind of landed in my lap, sort of saying. So. That's good. Um, <laughs> so you were, you're running the PT through mm-hmm. P3T, right? Mm-hmm. P3T program. Yeah. And you're the NCO I see of your shop. Yes. <laughs> How do you manage both? <laughs> and your soldiers, you have soldiers, correct? Yes, I and do. And you have twins. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, they always say work life balance and I'm a firm believer in if the job is done at work, then I can focus on whatever else I need to focus on. So, um, first step is taking it one step at a time day by day. So, um, initially I try to prep the day before so I can go into a successful week. So like I'll lay out clothes the night before, make sure I had a baby bags packed or whatever the case might be. Make sure my uniform is laid out, make sure I got PTs and then, I go from there. So I go to PT, we run a session and then roughly, I don't even, I don't even hold them to the 6.30, 7.30 standard. It's when that, when that 
when that um, workout is complete, we're done. Like, I don't believe in holding nobody hostage. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer of time. I like my time, so I'm sure everybody else like their time. So, I mean, um, once I once PT is done, I go home, I get my little snacks, whatever, ready for the day, just so I don't have to come home, go to work. I'm, I'm, I hit heavy on, like, all the major tasks in the morning, so in the afternoon, it's kind of more lax. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people don't understand that or they think oh well if they're not in the office they're not doing nothing if they're in the office they're not doing anything so it's like a lose-lose situation so um i'm just a firm believer in time like i don't i don't hold people hostage because i've been held hostage long. i don't like sitting around not doing anything so what are some of the biggest challenges you face being a 25 bravo uh okay so 25 bravo um it's a lot of people don't know the ins and outs of our job mm -hmm. since we're a support MOS. So a lot of people think like, well, at six, not really doing nothing. They're just in the office. They're on their computers. They're not X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. Um, but in reality, it's a lot of things that go on behind closed doors that a lot of people don't see. Um, all they know is, oh, well, I just put a ticket in and they should be able to jump and get up off their computers and do whatever I asked them to do when it's, that's not feasible. Mm -hmm. Because how am I going to remember what, S1 might need or how am I going to remember what supply might need if there's no way to track. Also, it's a ticket tracker um, to inform us what we need to take care of and so we know we don't lose sight of what we need to take care of. So, I mean, a lot of people don't know the technical side. They just like, oh, well, I can just turn the computer on. And if it don't work, S system do it. And essentially, that's just not, it's just not how it goes. So. Yeah, because you guys have different steps and different levels. Exactly. So, especially if, I um I know a lot of people say about your cyber awareness. If mm -hmm. your cyber awareness is uh -huh. up to date, then your account's going <laughs> to Exactly. Work. So, yeah. There's a lot of training. And people don't understand, like, well, if you don't do that cyber awareness or you don't sign that AUP or whatever the case is, then you're not going to have an account. And you get reminders in your email that's 30 true. days out, all the way up to seven days, I think three days even, mm -hmm. to remind yourself to do the cyber awareness. So people want you to jump when they say jump and that's not how I operate. And a lot of people don't like it. Do I care? No. <laughs> not going to sugarcoat that. Don't care. But I mean, it's a system in place so things can run effectively. That's just what it is. So how do you how do you delegate those tasks to your soldiers? Um so essentially since I have I have one other 25 Bravo and I have one 25 uniform. So depending on if it's like I mean, well, so the uniform is interchangeable with the Bravo. So they technically do the same things. Um, 25 uniforms is more so along the uh, radio lines or um, ComSec or things like that. So if it's anything help that's really like accounts or cyber awareness, SARS, whatever, pretty much everybody in the shop can do it. Now, if it's more catered towards that 25U with radios or they need keys for to make the aircraft fly or whatever the case might be, um, then I kind of lean more towards Bushroom, which is my 25 uniform. Mm -hmm. So I lean more towards him because that's his, he's the, he's the subject matter expert. So it just depends on what task it is and kind of who I got available at that yeah. time as well because I used to have four, now I got two soldiers. So, so since they have different MOSs, mm -hmm. how do you go about like training them on specific things that they need for just their specific MOS? Um, So initially, I we train all together on whatever it is. And then, so if it's more centered towards the 25U, then I try to, um, like my husband, he's a 25 uniform as well. Mm -hmm. And they always doing like some time, some type of sergeant times training or whatever the case is. So I'm like, hey, what y'all got going on this week? Can I send my uniform over there so he can, you know, get sped up on things that he don't know? So that's kind of how I've been working it since I've been here. Um, 25 Bravo, um, since it's me and Edie, we pretty much feed off of each other. So if it's something I might not know, I'm not ashamed to say I'm not, I don't know it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, can you speed me up on this or teach me how to do X, Y, and Z because things change over time. So that's how we do it. Yeah. So you said your husband is also a 25 uniform. Yes. So you guys are dual military. Yes. <laughs> So how how was that? Both of you guys, like, did you guys meet in the service? You guys are in the same twenty five, like. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so we met we met at Fort Bliss, so that's in El Paso, Texas. Um, I met we met through um two of our friends, 
And they was like, yeah, we think y'all be a good fit, X, Y, and Z. I'm like, mm, I don't know, because I'm like, I don't know if I really want to, you know? So, and then we went we went out. We used to go clubbing. So we went clubbing, and then, like, you know, you they, you get to know these people or whatever. Mm-hmm. So then um, he asked me on a date, and I was like, okay, I guess, I, you know, I guess I, you know, <laughs> we'll go on a date, see how things go. And then we've been locked in ever since, like, the third date. Like, really, really locked in since the third date. Period. So that's my boy. So that's my boy. That's my that's my ace man. Like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So um he recently went to NTC, correct? Yes. So NTC was 30 days? Yep. Uh, 30, 30 days. And once he came back, he went straight to SLC. Yes. <laughs> we had ro- SLC roughly, I think it's five weeks now. So he came back for a week and then went back. So so he's in Augusta now. So he in Augusta for five weeks. So how are you managing that? <laughs> Um, you run in the shop, you got run, the kids, you run in the P3T, <laughs> it, the, what, how? Um, work-life balance. It's just, if you, I, I'm a firm believer in prepping. So if you mm-hmm. prep at least the night before, it help you be successful throughout the week. And some days by day, like Wednesday or Thursday, I'll be tired. And I'll be like, you know what? Some got to fall by the wayside. So if that be, I might slack on some tasks. Mm-hmm. charge it to my head like it, <laughs> that's just what it is like I mean nothing's gonna always run smooth it's not gonna always be perfect but it's just work life balance like I I don't know honestly I don't really know how I'm doing it or how I'm managing it's just I guess by being in for so long like you kind of know the routine mm-hmm. so I guess I'll say routine is key so okay. has there any has there been any times where you've been gone and he had to take over the household who yes um so before we um PCS here we was at Fort Campbell mm-hmm. so it was a whole year's time where he will be in the field or I'll be in the field so he'll come home I'll leave and can he manage the household like me? No, but he does a great job when he does. <laughs> he um, yes, I'm gonna give him his credit because he always say, "You won't ever give me." An-. He, yes, he he handles it to my fitting. No, but that's just <laughs> me. you know. It's just you know us. I feel like females know how we want things ran, and we're so set in stone on like, okay, I need it to go like this. Mm-hmm. But then I have to realize I have to relinquish control because I'm like, I'm not here. Not there. So therefore, you lead, you take it. It should be out of my hands, stress free. So what you think? It's- yeah. So he manages. He he. I think the only thing he don't do is cook. So if he don't cook, he gonna buy some food. So I'm like, <laughs> if that works, last like if that works for y'all, then let it be. Mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> So how how was that for your relationship though? Um, I would say by both of us being dual, like both of us being military, it works only because we understand what the whole military entails and what the job holds. So it's like if I if I was on the outside looking in, I'd probably be like, you gotta go do what for how many days? Mm, I don't think that's gonna sit well with me. But I think just by us both knowing what the job holds, it it kind of helps in that whole situation. It ain't easy because I'm like, all right, now, look, come get your kids. <laughs> like, hurry up. Like, I know you got this going on, but when you come back, come get your kids. I need a break. But, I mean, it's just, it's routine. is being understanding and just trying to not, um, not be upset or not be angry because you kind of just like, you just got to roll with the punches because mm-hmm. this is kind of what we Signed up, for. signed up for so you know that that cliche is what you signed up for so so do you guys like push each other though like i feel like with y- <laughs> y'all both being, you know like i want to i'm i'm trying to outrank you yeah I, my pt yeah. score higher than yours yeah <laughs> um it's always competition um sometimes i'll be like you know what you got it this week mm-hmm. i don't feel like it uh, <laughs> but i feel i like i feel like with my husband being in the military, I feel like this is his thing and it runs smooth for him. Mm-hmm. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'm like, it's like <laughs> I, I can do the job and I know I can do the job, but it's just like those little things that I just don't, sometimes you don't agree with, but you mm-hmm. just got to take it on the chin because what you signed up for. Mm-hmm. So it's like, 
I'm always like, okay, I'm catching you, I'm catching you, I'm catching you, I'm trolling you, I'm trolling you. But I'm like, this time I'm going to go ahead and sit this one out. You got it because this one might be my last promotion. So I'm like, I think you might go ahead and take the win on this one. So I'm like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay <laughs> yeah, with I'm, that. I'm going to let you add it. You can have it. <laughs> right, you can have it. I'm good. So do you guys have a family care plan? Yes. What What exactly is a family care plan? Okay, so family care plan. Um, So it's initially for the commander. So it's for, I don't want to say protection, but it's kind of like to help you and your family out, make sure they're taken care of just in case you deploy or have to go on a field rotation or whatever the case might be. Um, Initially, you sit down with the commander, you go through a list of documents, um, initially just saying what you're what you're allotted to what you have the rights to do and what you can't do pretty much Mm -hmm. but within that family care plan you need long-term personnel which is somebody that's like not in the state with you but they can take care of your kids if they need to they can fly out or fly your kids out whatever the Mm -hmm. case might be and then you need a short-term person which is somebody that's within the states or maybe the 250 mile radius that can like be on call pretty much for you and your kids so So who who exactly needs one like um so if you're dual military you need one and if you're a single parent you need one Mm -hmm. um there it's been some cases where i've seen some people or some commanders want personnel that's like one if you're in the military and your spouse is a civilian they kind of want a family care plan in place Mm -hmm. or if you have custody of your kid and you know you're separated or whatever the case might be so some some commanders want different things but majority is single parents and dual military uh i've read that if you don't have a family care plan that could be a reason to be chaptered out yeah so Depending on commanders, I'll say that. Depending on your commander, um, they when you initially sit down, you, you're supposed to get a counseling saying you um, these are the documents you need for your family care plan. You have 30 days for these um, documents to be signed. Mm-hmm. If you can't get them signed, then you allot it to 15-day mem- uh, extension memos. And then if you can't cover those or that time frame, then they start working on the paperwork to chapter you out. Wow. Yep. <laughs> that is crazy. Because yeah. what if what if there's nobody you trust long term with your child? Like, how does that work? You want to know the truth, true? Because you need the truth. Okay. <laughs> so for me, I the short term caregiver never sat right with me with the family care plan, only because once you move to another state, it's like I don't really know anybody here, so I don't trust you with my kids, and that's just that's just what it is. Mm-hmm. So, um, in some cases. So in this case, mm-hmm. for me here at this time, this go around. So um, the caregiver at the daycare for my twins, me and her build a relationship. And like, I trust her solely with my kids. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, um, hey, do you mind if I put you on my family care plan? Because I know you'll, you'll be able to take care of my kids. Like I take care of my kids. So I'm a person that like, if you, if I take my babies to daycare and I see that you love on my babies, how I love on my babies and you treat them like they're your own, then I'm good with that. I'm a little bit, I, I can sleep a little bit better at night knowing like, hey, I know she'll take care of my kids and I know she'll get them to where they need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been other cases where um, I've used other service members on my family care plan um, just so I can have my, dot my, dot my eyes and yeah, cross my T's. So, I mean, it just, you have to kind of do what works for you. Um, as long as it's done, as <laughs> long as it's done, and long as you, as long as that person is tracking that that mm-hmm. you're using them, then I, that's what I've done in the past. So you can use other service members. I've used my in laws, and they're like two hours away. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it just depends on. Do you, so when when you have them as your person for your family care plan. Mm-hmm. How does that, like, do you have to send them money? Do you have to give them the medical? Like, what if your baby gets sick while they're with them? Okay. Um. So when you enroll your baby in deers or babies in deers, they get a little ID card. It's a dependent ID card. So that's essentially their insurance card. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's been cases where I sent my kids home to my mom, and I just give her those ID cards. And she had to take them to the doctor before. And they, you just show them the ID card because they have their own DOD number, mm-hmm. and it falls under me for being their sponsor. Mm-hmm. So... They're pretty much covered. Um, and then what else? So yeah, if you if if 
it's an emergency, they'll be taken care of. If if baby needs anything, you technically can set up an allotment for money to come out of your account to go to a different bank account, and then you can set up a debit card or whatever you want for your baby to be good. So I've it's been different cases with different cases, different scenarios. So okay. So do you um. Has there ever been a point in time where you had to implement your family care plan? Um, I haven't been deployed. So mm -hmm. some some commanders want you to implement it if you go to like NTC rotations. Because mm -hmm. it, it has been a case where my husband went a week before I went. And then I was still here. And then I had to leave this next week. So it's been cases where I, I'm like, what am I supposed yeah. to do? So I had to like either I try to catch a quick flight or I try to fly my mom out so she can get the kids and then move from there. But it, it, essentially for those field exercises, you're not supposed to have to implement mm -hmm. a family care plan. It's only supposed to be for deployments and that's strictly it. But some commanders, some first line supervisors try to use the family care plan against you. Okay. So, so if your kid is sick, mm -hmm. do you, is like, do you get the day off? Do you have to take leave? Or is that a family care plan type thing? So uh, before, so I wish I would have got the um, Alarac. Um, so it's a memo stating that, like, if your kid gets sick, you do not have to take leave. Mm -hmm. You do not have to init initiate your family care plan. You have you you get to be on quarters with that child. So in the past, it, it was a problem where um, some command teams want you to, okay, well, your baby's sick. Then, okay, you're going to take leave. And they used to force people to take leave. But mm -hmm. if my baby, if they put my baby on quarters, who's going to be on quarters with my baby? Exactly. Like, exactly. That's what I'm like, if my baby's sick, I'm not, I don't want nobody else to get sick. I'd rather I get sick with my baby than, you know, putting that on somebody else, making it not a burden, but a burden. So, so do, do leaders still like give issues with stuff like that, even though it's like written out? So, some cases, some, some leaders do because they don't know. Mm -hmm. Or they don't take the time out to um, read up on those regulations or those memos or whatever's being pushed. Like, they just see it as, well, you're a soldier and you need to be here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm. So when stuff like that does change, how, since you're a senior NCO, obviously, mm -hmm. how do you think the best way for a junior enlisted to tell you, like, you're, you're not, not saying you're wrong, but, hey, this is updated can you, you know, look at what's the new, the new thing? How do you say that? Um, so I've been in a situation, well, I've been in a couple of situations where I had to like kind of give my leadership mm -hmm. something updated. So I'm like, hey, sir, hey, Sarn, whoever. I'm like, um, can I talk to you one on one? And then once they give me the okay, I'm like, can we speak candidly? Can we have a, you know, adult to adult conversation? Mm -hmm. And I let them like, hey, um. Per regulation, per memo, per whatever was pushed, um, it says that I don't have to take leave days to be here. I mean, to um, to go spend time taking care of my child, mm -hmm. or or what? I, like even outside of the family care plan, or even outside of baby being sick, if I feel as though we're all human, so we should all be able to have that conversation with said person. We all adults, right? So why not be able to speak like adults? If you're not gonna talk to your child or dismiss your child, then why not this talk to you? exactly why dismiss me? Why not give me that same courtesy that you you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm technically you're you're my leader at work, right? So technically you're supposed to be taking care of me. So in a sort of sense, like, hey, mom, dad, like, you know, like yeah. Like you know, talk. help me talk. Like you know, what I'm saying, let's have that dialogue so we can move forward and we know how to move forward. Mm -hmm. So. So when um has there ever been a point in time where you had to speak down on a soldier or like they've been disrespectful to you? Um I'm not gonna say a couple of times, but roughly a couple of times where I, I you know, I have had to lock a soldier up. And that's not my thing. Like I, I get it. It's all it's all part mm -hmm. of rules you know the rules and regulations of the army, but it's not my thing because I'm like, Ew. Yeah, so you know awkward. what I mean? Like then I have to maneuver a certain way after that so if i'm locking you up like that means a you really like stepped outside of your your boundaries with me mm -hmm. or b like you really disrespected me and mm -hmm. i'm very big on disrespect i'm like i'm very i'm big on respect like give some take some whatever the case is it's a two-way street like you shouldn't be talking to me sideways and i shouldn't be talking to you sideways but if you get out of hand best believe it's not flying because if i don't let my kids talk to me like that i'm not going to let an adult talk to me like that so 
It is what it is. Okay. So what has been your biggest accomplishment in the Army? Um, I would say um, being promoted like to E6 because I've never, if you would have talked to PFC, brag at the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would have never seen myself coming this far. Um, only because when I got to my first duty station, I hated it. I hated it so bad. Like I love, I love basic training. I love AIT, but I guess it was like, they call it big army when you get to big army and like you're away from all your like friends and family you don't have nobody mm -hmm. it's like it's a shell shock because i'm like i'm so close knit with my family so it's like oh my god what is this yeah. it was like it was brand new but i had an nco and like when i say he took care of me like he really made sure me and all other soldiers was like hey you need anything you you know want y'all come together and do x y and z or want y'all you know depend on each other or whatever you need i'm there for you and if i didn't have that leader mm -hmm. then i would have been like Probably would have got. Yeah, I would have been done. And like when I met my husband, I told him, "Like, look, I'm done." I'm like, he's like, "I can't do long distance." I'm like, "Ah, oh my god!" But I, I credit a lot of things to him because I'm like, if it wasn't for you, I probably would have been long gone. Mm -hmm. So, but besides being promoted, um, I'm actually almost done with my master's degree. So that's another accomplishment that I didn't Ugh. see because I'm like, Ugh. "What are you studying?" So right now it's industrial organizational psychology. Um, so it's a mouthful, but <laughs> essentially it's more of the um business side. Um, it's more of the psychology. It's the psycho psychological side mm -hmm. of the business world. Okay. So instead of of me caring about your business and how you run your business X, Y, Z. I care about the people that's in that business mm -hmm. and how you can keep said people working in your business to keep it afloat. So so how much have you paid out of pocket for any of these schools? <sighs> so my bachelor's degree completely free. Completely. Real. With TA, I use TA and um, if I uh, if I use all my TA for that physical year, I use FAFSA. So it was like financial aid or whatever, but I never had to take out a loan. My master's degree, um, right now I use TA with my master's. Mm -hmm. Um, they cover roughly seven hundred and fifty of my master's, and roughly I'm paying like eleven hundred out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So, um, roughly right now I've paid two thousand, which is not essentially. You said you're almost done though, mm -hmm. right? I'm almost done. I have three classes left. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed I should be done. If not by the end of the year, the first quarter of next year, I should be done. Did you also use FAFSA for your master's? So I use all my FAFSA. Awesome. <laughs> I use all my FAFSA. Mm -hmm. I wish I, I, going back, I wish I would have just used my TA for my bachelor's and then I would have used the rest of my FAFSA for my master's. Mm -hmm. But essentially I could, I could use my GI Bill to cover the rest of my master's degree, but I don't want to touch it just in case I'm, if I decide to give it to my kids yeah. or if I want to, I don't know, pursue a doctor is what I get out. I don't know, but I'm like, I don't want to touch it. So I don't mind paying, you know, the little extra out of my pocket. But I'm almost done. So so what are, what are you planning to do for your degree, though? Um, So it's a lot of fields I can touch with it. I can either go into recruiting. I can be a consultant. I can be um HR. So as of now, I feel as though I'm leaning more towards that consultant part. And um, I feel like I'm a big on observing like how things are in. So if I see a flaw in that system, I'm like, you could do X, Y, and Z to kind of like tweak it a little bit or change it this way or even, you know, do a population survey or whatever the case might be to like get your business or whatever, how you see fit. So so for your MOS, do you have any like certifications for that? So certifications for MOS, they it's, it's lots of them, but the baseline is Security Plus. Mm -hmm. So Security Plus, it gets your foot in the door. And if you got um, a security clearance, that'll be your, you can touch six figures roughly with just that certification mm -hmm. and having a um, security clearance. So will either of those two help you in your degree field? Uh, <laughs> okay. No, mm -hmm. because my I'm doing tech and then I'm doing psychology. So they they could coincide if I decided to do um roughly like the consultant part of it mm -hmm. or even a hint of HR. But like, no, other than that, they'll have nothing to do with each other. And a lot of people be like, why you do it that way? <laughs> and I'm like, I like tech, but I don't like tech enough to like to, to yeah. be in it for a lifetime and then so, after the exactly so yeah i'm like i don't like i like people but i don't like the customer <laughs> service part sometimes it's it's annoying so and, since you already have your bachelor's mm -hmm. and almost finished your master's why don't you commission you know? so i thought about commissioning mm -hmm. um 
it's 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 on the drawing board. It's on the drawing board. Um, I just I don't know if I want to stay in. So that's the only thing that's like stopping me right now. Um, but I have what I need to commission. It's just. Do I want a commission? Like, I like the Army, but I have a love-hate relationship with it. So it's like... Are you planning to re-enlist, though? Um, right now, I have nine months to my ETN. <laughs> so, um, essentially, my husband, he is on assignment. So, um, in order for me to follow him, I will have to re-enlist or extend. I'm still waiting on a retention to get back to me. Mm -hmm. But um, in this case, I thought about staying here and just getting out here and then meet my husband over there. But I'm like, it's going to be too much. So essentially, yes, I will re-enlist. But for the shortest amount of time as they will possibly give me, just so I can get up out of here. Go. Mm -hmm. So since he, like with door military, you say he's upon orders. Mm -hmm. So do you automatically get orders as being his spouse? Yeah. So essentially, yes. So when you're when you get married to another service member, you have to um, enroll in a military couple program mm -hmm. or married army couple program, however. And so once you enroll, whoever um, gets orders or getting ready to PCS, then you're allotted to be on that same move with them. So you just have to, your your retention and your spouse's retention has to talk to make sure that y'all are aligned for the next move. Or have there been cases where like they don't end up at the same base? Um, for us, no, but it ha it, it I have met couples where one would be at one installation and another would be like 150 miles up the road. Mm -hmm. So I think the if I'm not mistaken, the furthest you can be from your spouse is roughly like that 150 to 250 mile radius. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can be in two different locations, just not like a whole world away. away. From each other. Yeah. All right. Okay, so what if you do decide to get out? Okay. <laughs> what what's your plans? Okay, so once I get out, um, so with this degree, my last class is I can either take a capstone or internship. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to lean more towards that internship. That internship that get let allow me to have experience in my degree. So when I do step out in the real world, they can't be like, well, you only got a degree, no experience. Because a lot of a lot of um corporations want you to have some type of experience. Mm -hmm. So once I do have a little bit of that experience, I want to at least try to see what CSPs is out there, which is, you know, the CSPs is um for when you get ready to ETS, you can um pick a course that help you transition easily or mm -hmm. for simplest terms. Um, so if I get that CSP, that'll give me a little bit more experience. And then I eventually, the plan is at least six months at home mm -hmm. so I could be a dependent. <laughs> <laughs> I was then heavy on that dependent part, but at least six months as a dependent, stay home with my kids. They just, you know, get a little more of uh, us time and then eventually see what's out there in the world. So I don't know. Fingers crossed. I've talked to a lot of people. Um, they do have positions out there. So I got to do a lot of networking on my last little year. Yeah. And while I'm in, that way I can get my foot in the door. So so if you do get out, mm -hmm. is your husband planning to stay in? Yes. He he doing a full 20. Yeah, so he, he, a life. He's a little, he a lifer. He already said he's a full lifer. He's saying he's starting over. So he's a full lifer. Um, and I'm good. Either way I go, I'm good. So <laughs> I mean, if I decide to be a dependent, if I decide to go on the reserve side, whatever, I'll be good one way or the other. So. All right. Well, is there any advice you want to give out to any soldiers out there? Um, Don't be scared of anybody. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say everybody is a person outside of this uniform. Mm -hmm. um, some people try to intimidate you or some people might think you're intimidating or whatever the case might be. But be brave, like really be brave and stand on your beliefs, your morals. Do not compromise yourself to please the next person. I'm not saying be disrespectful. I'm not saying break rules. I'm not saying any of those things. But always be you and stand firm on that. Period. Period. All right, guys. Now, this concludes the episode of The Mashup. If there's anybody else you want to talk to, any MOSs, any subjects you want me to head on, just like and subscribe and comment below. Bye. Bye.